What are the fundamental things that you need to know about Godot's control nodes in order to use them effectively? Control nodes are usually used for creating user interfaces and are different from Node2D or Spatial nodes. A control node usually provides some sort of basic UI functionality. This could be anything like a button, a progress bar, a text label that shows text to the screen, a text input box, and many more items. It's important to note that for almost all cases, control nodes should only be used with other control nodes. This means a Node2D or Spatial type node should never be the child of a control node. All control nodes contain two primary settings, anchor and margin, each of which contain four numeric properties, left, top, right, and bottom. Those refer to the left, top, right, and bottom sides of your control. Anchor values almost always stay between 0 and 1 only. You can think of it kind of as a percent from 0 to 100%. Margin values, on the other hand, are in pixel units. The anchor values determine where the left, top, right, and bottom edges of your control should be placed relative to its parent control's top left position and parent control's size. Let me explain. Let's take a look at this color rect node that I have. A color rect is simply a control that draws a colored rectangle to the screen. Also take notice of its parent, root, which is just a normal control node. The editor outlines the size of root, the color rect's parent, on the screen here. You can see it in faint blue lines on the screen. Keep that in mind as we go through the examples. That's the size of the green color rect's parent. Notice how we can't actually see the color rect on the screen. In fact, all we can see is a tiny little point at the top left of root, and we can't even see a colored rectangle right now. That's because the anchor values of our color rect are all zero. What happens if we change the right and bottom anchors to one? All of a sudden, we see a green colored rectangle appear, and it fills up the entire width and height of its parent. So what's happening? Well, anchor sets the position of the left, top, right, and bottom sides of your control, equal to the top left position of its parent plus the corresponding anchor value for whatever side multiplied by the size of its parent. Left and right anchors are multiplied by the parent's width while top and bottom anchors are multiplied by the parent's height. So let's assume that the size of green color rect's parent root is 800 pixels wide by 500 pixels tall. If we set the left anchor of our color rect to 0.25, you'll notice that it moves inward from its parent. What this is really doing is it's setting the x position of our color rect, or the left side of our color rect, equal to the left position of its parent, which is right here, plus the parent's width, 800 pixels, multiplied by the anchor value that we set, 0.25. So 0.25 multiplied by 800 pixels is 200 pixels. That means the left side of our control is 200 pixels inward from the left edge of our parent. Similarly, if we change the right anchor to 0.75, you'll notice that it moves inward from the right. This is the exact same thing. What this is doing is it's setting the right edge of our control, it's setting that position equal to the left edge of the parent, plus the anchor value, 0.75, multiplied by the parent's width, 800 pixels. 800 times 0.75 is 600 pixels, which means the right edge of our control is 600 pixels in from the left side of its parent. Note that all calculations start from the top left position of the parent, which might seem a little bit strange at first. For example, you might not have thought that the right anchor would be based off the left side of its parent, but it is. This just takes a little bit of getting used to. This works the same for the top and bottom anchors. If I change the top anchor to 0.1, you'll notice that it moves inward. This is because this means we want to set the control's top edge position equal to the top edge position of its parent plus its parent's height, 500 pixels, multiplied by the anchor value, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 times 500 is 50 pixels, so it goes 50 pixels down from the top. Similarly, if we change bottom to something like 0 0.9, it's the same thing. It's setting the bottom position of our control equal to the top edge of its parent plus the anchor value, 0 0.9, multiplied by the parent's height, 500 pixels, which is 450 pixels down from the top. Note that because of the way this system works, the right anchor can never be less than the left anchor, and the bottom anchor can never be less than the top anchor. In fact, if I try to change the right anchor to 0 0.2, which is less than the left anchor right now, 
you'll notice that Godot automatically forces the left anchor to be equal because the right anchor cannot be less than the left anchor. Let me go ahead and change those back to what we had. I should also point out that anchor values can be less than zero and greater than one, though that generally doesn't have a use case for most things. Now, what about the root node? It doesn't have a parent, but it still takes up some size. How can this be? Well, let's take a look at the anchor settings of my root node. There's zero, zero, and one, and one. We know from the previous example with our color rec that this should fill its parent, but it doesn't have a parent. In that case, Godot will default the parent to act like the screen. In other words, the root node is going to be based off of the top left of the screen and the screen size. In the editor here, that simply shows as your project window size settings. In all my games, my root level control node always has anchors of 0, 0, 1, and 1, and that will fill up the entire screen for me. Let's take a look at the margin values. The margin values determine the left, right, top, and bottom offsets to your control relative to its anchor points. If I change the left margin to 50, that simply adds 50 pixels from where the anchor position is. In fact, in the editor, you can see where the old anchor position was by these green little corner markers here. And you'll notice that we simply added 50 pixels to that. And that's where the position of our color direct happens. If we do the same for the right margin, incremented by 50, you'll notice that it simply adds 50 pixels to the right side. If we want the right side to come in by 50 pixels instead, we have to set that margin equal to negative 50 instead. This works similarly for the top and bottom margins as well. Before we move on to what containers are, what about these rect settings here? Every control has rect settings that include a position, a size, and a min size, along with rotation and scaling and other stuff. You'll notice that these values have already been changed for us, and that's because Godot, when you modify the anchor or margin values, it automatically recomputes the position and size properties of the control. These properties refer to the actual pixel position and pixel size of your control. In almost all circumstances, though there are a few use cases, you do not want to manually modify position and size because the second that anchor or margin changes, Godot is going to recompute those for you and it's not even going to take what you set. Besides, that defeats the purpose of using control nodes. There is one useful property, however, called min size. This sets the minimum size that your control can ever be, and it will never be smaller than the size that you set. For example, if I set this to 500 by 500, you'll notice that it forces my control to be rendered at 500 by 500 pixels, even though its anchor values still appear to be in the positions that we set for it. But because that particular size is smaller than our min size, it doesn't allow us to do it. If our min size was something smaller, like 50 by 50, you'll notice that the rectangle is much larger than 50 by 50, but that's just because the anchors we set were larger than the min size, and we have no problem. What about grow direction? You have horizontal and vertical grow settings. And if we look at the property here, this controls the direction of the horizontal axis, which the control should grow if horizontal minimum size is changed. So in other words, if this is set to end, and all of a sudden we change the min size to 1000, you'll notice that everything stays at the left and top sides, but it expands to the right. Let me change that back. Let's instead use a horizontal grow direction of begin. Now let's change the mid size to 1000. Notice how it grew differently. In this case, it expanded to the left toward the start. There's also another setting, which is both. And that will sort of center what you change. So just to show that again, if horizontal grow is both, and we change this to 1000, it expands equally to the left and to the right. This is the same for the vertical grow direction. I'm going to change that all back. So now you know what anchor, margin, and grow direction are, as well as how min size affects the control. A control has many other settings, but those are all for another video. So far, I bet controls are seeming pretty useless and disappointing right now. Who would ever want to work with anchor and margin instead of pixels? That's because we haven't talked about container control nodes yet. A container is a special type of control node. Let's add a new node to our scene. 
And any node that extends container is special. There's a lot of different ones here, but two of the most common ones are HBox container and VBox container. Let's play around with HBox container. Just like any normal control node, we can set its anchor and margin properties. If I want the HBox container to completely fill up its parent, root, we already know how to do that. Let's reset its margin to zero, and let's set its right and bottom anchor points to one. Now we can see the HBox fills up its parent. A container is a control node that is responsible for laying out, sizing, and arranging its children nodes in some particular way automatically. So let's take our green color rect and let's drag that into HBox container as a child and let's see what happens. Oh no, it totally changed everything about this color rect. It modified its anchor, it modified its margin for us. Everything is different. Let's see what happens when we add another one. Let's go ahead and duplicate the green color rect, except I'm going to name this blue color rect. And I'm just going to change the color to blue. And you'll see that it's stacked next to the green one. That's because an HBox container organizes its children horizontally. It stacks its, hor its children horizontally. So no matter how many extra nodes we add as children, it just keeps stacking them horizontally for us. And that's where the power of control nodes comes in. It's important to note that you should now no longer manually touch the anchor and margin properties of any child that is a child of a container node, because it's the container's responsibility to calculate its anchor, margin, size, and position for you. And if you try to manually edit these, these properties of something that's in a container, you're going to have a rough time. Now we need to talk about some of the extra settings that control nodes have. First of all, let's take a look at the HBox container. There is one extra setting called alignment, this simply changes the alignment of these items. So if we click center, it just centers everything. If we click end, it moves everything to, in this case, the end means the right because we're in a horizontal box container. In a V box container, end would mean the bottom or begin would mean the top. In this case, begin means the left. But what if we want the blue color rect to fill up any remaining space? That's where size flags come in. Let's click the blue color rect and notice that there is a category called size flags. Size flags don't actually do anything to the control itself. However, if it's inside of a container, the container can look at these size flags to know how to size this control relative to the other ones. I recommend you look at the Godot documentation to know what these mean, but if we instead want the blue to take up the remaining amount of space, we can simply click expand. This tells any container that this control is a part of to try to give it as much horizontal space as it possibly can. We can also change the vertical setting. For example, if we uncheck fill, you'll notice that it simply resets to the minimum size of this. In this case, 50 units tall is the minimum size, so it won't go any smaller than that. Of course, if we don't have any minimum size, we can't see anything now, but we'll put fill back. This means if we take another green color rect and we duplicate this one and put it after the blue color rect, You'll notice that it resizes everything to allow it to fit in the HBox container. The green ones take up just as much space as they need, they're just set to fill, but the blue expands to fill up as much horizontal space as the container has for it. Now you know the basics of control and container nodes. Using various types of containers, you can create some pretty complex layouts that will automatically resize themselves when the screen size changes and all sorts of things. A container can also be a child of another container. For example, let's add a VBox container, a vertical box container, into the HBox container. And let's go ahead and let's duplicate some more of these green colored recs. And let's just add a few of them to the VBox container. As you can see, the VBox container is the exact same thing as the HBox container, except it aligns its items vertically. It stacks them vertically. We can set its alignment, which is vertical alignment in this case, as you can see. Similarly, we can set the size flag of this VBox container to be expand in the horizontal direction. And now we have two items that have expand set, blue color rect and VBox container. And what HBox container does is it just divides up all the remaining space evenly and it tries to give each of them as much space as it can to be fair. Notice again that we did not manually touch the anchor or margin properties of the VBox container 
because it is the child of another container and it's the container's responsibility to change the size, position, anchor, and everything of its children. Control nodes have a lot more to offer. There's a lot of things to learn about input to control nodes and learning about control themes are really exciting and you can stylize your app really simply with Godot. But those are all things for another video. I hope this gave you a nice overview of control and container nodes. Thank you all so much for watching.